Hello beautiful people. It's a very lovely Saturday evening from this part of the world, Doha, Qatar. And I'm so happy to be back on the Vision Guide channel. If you're new here, if you're seeing my face for the first time, my name is Oye Oye Layo. And you're welcome to this special edition of Parenting Essentials. It's a non-official Parenting Essentials. I had a long day. I just feel, let me just relax here and let's talk about our children. So, you're welcome. If you're new here, please don't go without hitting the subscribe button. It will be good for you to click on the notification bell so that you get notified anytime we drop our new videos. You are welcome. So, on today's special edition of a relaxed mode of preventing essentials, what are we talking about? Actually, it's been a very long day for me. You can see my eyes are really red. I'm tired, exhausted. However, you know, you just have to keep going. It's very important for me to drop a video on Parenting Essentials. And I hope you're learning something from all our videos, especially Parenting Essentials. And that is why your comments are very important to us. Your comments are personally important to me. Always drop your comments. If you're learning something, drop and let us know. And don't forget to always send in your questions. And we're going to try as much as we can to get back to you as soon as possible. So I've been having some questions on uh, children, parents asking me about how can I know my child's interest, even as early as one year and things like that. And I'll be talking briefly on this aspect today. But before I go ahead, I know a lot of people know and it's a known fact that children are not the same. Children are never the same. And for me, having two at the same time, a boy and a girl having twins, has made it like a kind of confirmation. Even though I knew before that children are never the same, I was so sure that children are never the same. But having the privilege to carry twins and to have them gave me a very assurance that children are never the same. From the first day of life, even my experience during pregnancy, then their movement and everything is not the same. So it is an established fact that children are not the same. And if you have been watching my videos, I've always been talking about finding a unique child. It is very important for us as parents to find a unique child. So today I'm going to give you some few points that are going to be useful to many parents. So let's get started. Just as I said before, children are never the same so how do you get to know your child's interest even before the age of one building a relationship with your child is not a day journey it's not a journey that you start when your child is one month or five months or one year so you can't jump some things and jump to a year old child and you're saying that you want to get to know your child's interest your child is just two years, you want to know your child's interest as two, and you have omitted or you have jumped some points that I'm going to be talking about now. So if you like, you can just take your pen and just write these things down. They are very, they've been proven. And I have personally checked and I can see it worked. So what are the things that you can do as parent to help you get to know your child's interest? This tad from pregnancy. Even you agree with me, if you've been pregnant before, if you're a mother, that even fetus, they have routine. They have this time that they are waking your tummy in the womb and they're just rolling and kicking you. They won't allow you to sleep. If you check at that particular time, you will realize that it happens, that the routine is the same. In this particular time today, it will last for a while before it's going to change. So when we talk about routine in children, it doesn't just start when they are out of the womb. They start from their life as fetus in the womb. Right from when they were in the womb, this has been their routine. They have routine, they have the time to kick you, they, have the, they just be quiet and you're just tapping. Babe, are you okay? Babe, because you're not even feeling any movement. Maybe the, the foot of the baby, the fetus at the time is sleeping. So you have to be sensitive. If you are a parent that is interested in understanding your child, in getting to know your unique child, 
don't wait check from pregnancy never wait so you have to be intentional you have to be purposeful you have to be intentional you have to have a vision of what exactly you're looking for and how you want to raise your children be sensitive to every activity that's happening to your baby even right from the womb try to notice this time, you know, it's the babies even in the womb, they have years. You realize that even sometimes when they are kicking you too much, if you say some words that they are used to, they get to respond to you. They can be quiet sometimes. If you are the type that will be reading to your baby during pregnancy, it works. If you've been singing to your baby during pregnancy, you can see that they are so used to a particular song. If you, have, if you don't know this, you can try it in your next pregnancy or in your first pregnancy. When the baby gets used to a particular song or a particular way or reading method, they tend to respond. You get to realize what you tell your baby, your daddy is here, you can feel the movement. You can feel the movement. It's not an exaggeration, it's an established fact. So if you are the parent who want to be purposeful, want to be intentional, who have a vision about the kind of children you want to raise, this at the beginning. This at the beginning of your journey of being an intentional, a vision carrier parent. So you get to understand this is what is happening. You have to pay attention to details. It is very important for you pay attention to every detail. So by the time you have your baby from day one, you don't have to wait. So you have to pay attention. Never overlook anything. Nothing is less important. Nothing that is going around or to happen in your child's life is less important. Everything is very important from day one, for the way they, from the way they look, from the way they smile, from what kind of smile they respond to, from what kind of sound they respond to, from what kind of feelings they respond to. It is very important for an inten intentional parent. It is very important. For a parent with vision, with purpose, to pay attention to all these details. So, how then you start to engage your child with different activities. Don't wait. Even as early as one week, two weeks, sing songs to your child. Get to know which particular song or what kind of soft song or hard song, slow song. Which one is my child's smiling heart? which is my child responding back to me. Give them some fun books, soft books, some kind of texture feelings. Let them start to feel. Let them start to feel some things, even as early as one month, two months. Let them feel things in their hands. And you, your job is to just watch them and look out for their reaction. Begin to note all those things. If I, when I gave this soft or silky thing, my baby was not happy. You can see from baby's face if they are happy or sad. Even though they can't talk back at you, but their reaction, their feelings can tell from how they look. If your baby is happy about something, definitely they're going to give that smile. So these are the things you as a parent need to give attention to. So then this continue as you're tracking their developmental stages. And this is going to be part of my next video. I'm going to be talking about developmental stages and the things you need to look out for. The alarming things, things that may need an extra attention or extra care. I'm going to be talking about things that might be alarming or that might, be, that might give need for special attention. Don't forget that in early being, be it a special child, every child is special, I tell people. Every child, early intervention is always the best. No child is whatever it is, even they say that if they say those on the spectrum or those are special, every child is special. So uh, the way we embrace it, the way we pay attention, and the way we respond to our child's situation is what gives us the star. So in my next video, I'll be talking about things that you should look out for, things that may be alarming. So back to my point for today. We track your child's response with your own activity. You know, you get to know two months three months when i do this particular activity what happens how did my child respond to this music how did my child respond to these feelings how did my child respond to smile you begin to track and track and track and track and track so 
by so doing, you're going to have some ideas of, okay, my child's be able to think. You can even make a, a thick sheet for yourself. You can go online and just um, look out for the thick sheet of uh, maybe the developmental stages of babies or babies' interests. So you begin to track what are the areas your baby is interested. What are the areas your baby is look, looking happy when you have that particular activities? Or what are the tone or what are the things? You begin to track and you begin to track. I know it's kind of early. You can say, oh, what are you talking about? It's kind of early. Yes, it's early. But these are the things that will give you a concrete result. So these are the things that will give you hedge to your child's interests. It doesn't just happen automatically. If you have not been sensitive to your child's growth, to your child's feeling, it is very important for you to know your child's interest. Because I know this is a common question that I get and I feel, okay, let me just talk about it this evening. So getting to know your child's interest, it is not an automatic thing. You take process, you have to track, you have to be very sensitive and you have to pay attention to details. So you can ask me, oh, yeah, what are the things I need to pay attention to? You want to hear? You have to pay attention to everything. Yes, everything. Yes, of course, everything. Everything. You know, parenting is a full-time job. It's a 24 hours job. It's a 24 hours job. Even the way your child is feeding, you have to pay attention. Even the way your child is going to start to blab, you have to pay attention. I don't want to go into next week's video about some signs that might be alarming. However, I want you to know that you have to pay attention to every teeny tiny thing. Every teeny tiny thing. Nothing should be ignored. Nothing. Excuse me, I'm winking my eyes. See that? Nothing should be ignored. Really, sincerely, I'm very tired, guys. But you know, this is a very important talking topic that I want us to talk about. So, nothing should be ignored. Nothing. The way your child is taking is or a false step. You have to see. Try to see. Is there anything? You know, you have to check everything. The way your child is looking. The direction your child is looking. Your response. The children's response. Especially sense, you know, especially sensorial things. Pay attention. Through sensory activity, there's a lot of things that you can get to discover. And getting to know your child's interest, sensory activity is a very good thing. It's a very good activity that can give you edge. It can give you, it can give you clue on what exactly your child is interested in. I've talked about sensory activity before. You know, we have a lot of sensory activity. And uh, we talk about some activity about the mechanistic sound. I know the babies can do that. But you know you can make pasta. You can make pasta activity with your three-month-old baby, with your five-month-old baby. Just let, even jelly. Please let, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a parenting call. And it's, I know it's demanding. There is no picture perfect anywhere. They're going to mess up your house. But your job is to tidy the house until they get to understand when you give the instruction. So, so don't, it's never too late for you to just make jelly for seven month old baby, six month old baby. Just ensure you make everything you're going to use for them at home because they're going to end up tasting it. That is why whatever sensory activity you're going to do with your child must be edible and very, you know, must be safe and you have to ensure that the preparation is done by you. You know, I saw somebody recently, one of my close ladies, and I saw her baby making, like, make, enjoying this, this sensory activity. And I asked, what is that? She told me it's yogurt, and I put food, I put food color or something like that. And the child was really enjoying making mess of the yogurt. I was like, oh, that's nice, yogurt. I never talked about it. She said, no, no, I get to do that from you. But the truth is that I never mentioned yogurt before. I never used yogurt for my children or in my class before. So that's a very nice one. So parenting, it's, it's, a, it's, about, it's about fashion. You know, just like fashion is creativity. Parenting also is creativity. You have to be able to think ahead to be able to discover what is good for your child. Don't forget there is no standard in parenting. There is no standard. It's not what somebody is doing and that's the standard. No standard. Just know what is best for your child. We can emulate good things. We can look into people's life and say, this is good. I want to take that. 
but that is not a standard. Don't forget, they're also going to have an area that they are struggling. So what am I trying to say? No standard. Try to think and be able to create, be able to come up with something for your baby. You know, just don't be tired. I know it's tiring, but it's not forever. Parenting, especially at the early stage, it's not forever. It's just for a while. And let's just give them the best now so that we can see the result in the future. Let us use our strength. It's a little bit stressful. Let us be stressed out now so that we don't get stressed later in life. So back to sensory activity. You can make pasta, you can make spaghetti. Just And they love spaghetti so much. Just make sure it's well cooked. And you can just put some tiny food color. Just make different colors. Even that, you do know you can also teach your three-month-old baby colors, even with spaghetti. I know people are so used to flashcards. We have flashcards, we have number cards. These things sometimes are so tiring for babies. I've been working with children for the last over 12 years of my life, and I've come to realize that they want to learn with fun. I know everybody say children learn with fun, but how many fun are you creating as parents? Come on, let's call it spade. It's spade. Oh, it's tired right now. How many fun are you creating? So it's your job as parent to ensure that you create that atmosphere, the fun-filled atmosphere for your child. So you can go ahead and pasta and just make a division and you can divide into six different colors and just put it in tiny food color you know a sensory activity then you are also teaching colors so you can just do a whole lot of things together you're learning colors you are ensure you ensure that the, the sensory is developing so you are just you can even start counting then you learn colors you learn numbers you know you can solve the pasta one two three then in different groups you say this is yellow pasta this is blue pasta so together you're doing sensory activity you're learning calls you're learning counting so there's a whole lot you can do together a whole lot do you know you can also make a very nice homemade play-doh for your child it's never too late five months they can match play-doh of course they will eat it and that's why you have to cook it make sure it's well cooked and once it's well cooked, cook it without food color. If you also want to use it with uh, for color. So you can be thinking, how can I make one Play-Doh, one color, then I have to make another one. You don't have to do that. Maybe I'll try and make a video about how you can make this sensory activity one of these days. I'm not promising, but I'm going to try because I can be quite busy. So I'm going to make some, some fun activity to uh, and teach you and show you ways you can go about it. I'll try. To make fun activities and show you ways that you can teach your children so when you want to teach children with play-doh you don't have to stress yourself and cook one pot and the pot is dirty and you remove the pot and you cook another that's not the best way to do it you're going to stress out just prepare your white plain play-doh ensure it's well cooked you can, yeah ensure it's well cooked and put you can put olive oil because the baby is going to put it in they're going to eat it anyways when you prepare your white plain play-doh then you divide it into the number of colors you are intending to teach your child then you just open poke the play-doh and just put some few drops of food color here and there and do the mixing after that you just knit them you have the green color already just after cooking the play-doh so that you don't get tired you just mix the food bag ensure you buy good quality food color because they're gonna eat it they're going to eat it anyway so you just need that color so together at one you can prepare seven different color play-dohs and ensure that you don't rush your child especially when they are at early early month two months one month three months you can ensure you're teaching one color in one week so don't give too much until you see the response of your child don't forget we said it before that children are not the same some children are going to grasp as fast as possible but some are not going to grasp fast but that doesn't mean they are not okay they're fine they're just taking their time so don't try to say my friend's child is learning five colors in a week what is wrong with you mommy nothing is wrong with your child you see that you have to ensure that nothing is wrong with you so relax your child is okay don't put pressure on your child don't because your friends 
daughter is already counting one to twenty at age at age one and you feel your 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 ten month old baby is not still started counting one or two just relax your child is fine your child is fine don't give pressure so before you can know how much you have to put into your child you have to wait to see the result of his response or of a response let your child be responding at the lower pace or the slow pace first as soon as your child is responding then you can try to introduce introduce more things to your child but don't let it be too much at the same time sometimes they get confused like what is going on and they, then that can make them not to have interest in anything and that you know this is the same thing that happens during when people are doing the potty training they say they want to do potty potty training is good early enough for you have to ensure that your child is ready because some people will start potty training and they will stop again because the child is so uh, this gives about delay big delay because the child is already frustrated a child who is not ready you're just yelling at the child and something like that so ensure the readiness of the child the readiness of your child is very important then you can give the next step and another step and another step and another step so i want you to just send in your questions on this aspect so you can also send us your email on info at the vision guide ltd.com so we have two email open for you now the vision guide division guide at gmail.com also info at the vision guide ltd.com keep your question rolling in we are going to get back to you as soon as possible don't forget that statement and children are not the same. I've seen parents get worried on things that are not really necessary. Things, things that are not even alarming. That's why I'm going to be making a video next week on things that might be alarming that you should pay attention to because early intervention is the key. Early intervention is the key. I've seen parents that have seen these signs but they ignore it. No, my child is okay. Don't forget everybody's children are okay but the word early intervention is key is a must so my next video i'll be talking about few alarming things that you might need to check with your doctor that can that can clarify it for you so never ignore any sign that are alarming it's better to check to ensure that everything is okay on this note on getting to know your child's better it's going to be a gradual thing okay i know i'm tired but know what I'm just going to bring some resources. There's no sensory. I don't have any sensory thing at home at the moment. And I can't think I can just take you to the kitchen right now and make Play-Doh because I'm really very tired. But, okay, I think I can do that for you. i just show you how you can mix the Play-Doh and show you some flashcards and see and show you how you can get your child's attention. All right, that means you're going to give me a moment and let me stand up and get back to you. All right, I'm back. So I'm just going to be showing you some activities that you can do with your baby, with your child, your toddler, your infant that are going to be very useful for them. So I'm going to start with uh, infants. I know it's very, after I spoke about the Play-Doh, which I don't think I'm going to do today. Let's see how that goes. Uh, after I spoke about the Play-Doh and how you're going to make it. So... Also, you can make a very nice jelly. Make a, in fact, if you, you can make jelly, just make jelly and put it on the plane, a very nice small table for them. And let them just, just use your hand to, make, to, to spread it around and to feel it is a very nice sensory activity. Also, corn flour is a very good one. You know, the feeling of corn flour, you know how it is. One moment is a liquid, another moment is solid. So while they are doing the sensory activity, you can teach them the liquid state and the solid state. You can think they're young, they know, but they get you familiar to these things. What is happening? Is it liquid? Is it solid? Even though they can't ask you, but they get to see these things and they get to feel it. And these are the things we want to achieve, ensuring that they are feeling and they are able to uh, experiences feelings and helping their brain to develop. Messy planting cannot be overemphasized. I know a lot of people, this is not a paid advert anyway, I'm not here to promote any paint, 
but messy painting is very good i know it's a lot of work for you as a mother or as a father or spirit generally all you need to do is just to ensure that you have a very cleared out space it's not going to be easy it needs to be under supervision especially if your child is around two years and below or two years between two and three years even if it's four years five years you still need to supervise them they're still children because if it is footprint and if care is not taken they can sleep off except you they, even if they're wearing the bubble bags in the on their feet you still need to watch them and supervise them closely but it's a very fun field activity for children you can put plastic on the floor and just allow your child to sit if you like you can use apron but bear in mind with or without apron they're going to be very messy don't be surprised when they just put the paint on their face and rub it around them it's a very good activity don't forget your child is growing the child is having fun which is the most important your child is also learning and the sensory aspect of your child is developing so ensure you create enough space don't do this activity where you can be worried or bothered oh my couch oh my sofa oh my cushions no ensure it's a very clear space and if possible join in or you watch your child closely and don't just ignore your child this ignoring a child is not only for painting activity for every activity never ignore your child if you're at home i know a teacher that knows his or a job will not ignore any child in this kind of activity in the classroom so as parents because you don't know much or you're not a professional teacher you might think okay my child is just busy with that i can go ahead and cook it's not a time for you to just run into your bedroom and take a nap or go to your bed or go to your kitchen and cook it's a time for you to communicate with your child while your child is learning the sensory aspect of life they are also going to be developing their communication communication skills need to develop paints green paints what is this they start to build their vocabulary smooth they put the paint on their palm and they rub it together smooth smooth the child can get messy it's okay it's not a problem this is not it's sealed I was going to just show you how smooth that feels. It's, it's the seal the name. So just feel it. Just rub it on the floor, the surface. They feel the surface. They rub it on each other. They learn feelings. They learn their, they develop their vocabularies. They, uh, they develop their communication skills. A lot of things will be going on at that time. So painting is a good one. Try that hand. Also, I have this color, the thread here and here. I can't even remember where I get them from, but I'm sure this is just tiny thread. Can you see them? So I'm sure that you can get something like this from Amazon. So because they are not strong, because I have these other colors that are thick, but this is not advisable. I hope you can see them. They're colorful. Uh, I think I get them from, from those who are in Qatar. I think this is from around neck. And from around neck, can, you can get so many affordable uh teaching resources for your child so many stationaries the things you can just create just walk around for me i love stationaries a lot i'm just addicted to stationaries sometimes i just walk into the around it and start shopping for stationery. my house is full so this is not advisable for children under two and if your child is even above two this should be supervised but yeah, i would not advise you to use this one for certain activity for your child that is below two except it's one-on-one -on -one activity except it's a one-on-one -on -one activity one child one full eye parent not a parent who is on phone not a parent who is running to the kitchen not a parent who is dozing off for being tired so this is just like this is just like sticks i have them right here but this one they are soft they are young they're thread so they are very good they can arm them said no poking can happen with this they just thread and see don't remove them from the pack because if you remove them from this, they are packed. You feel like, okay, if they wrap it around their neck, what happens? If they wrap it around their wrist, what happens? If they wrap it around their finger, they can just hold themselves. So that's why you keep them safe from there. See, they have to, to label, like it's holding them tight, like a tape that is taping them down. So if you want to use these things, they are so also soft. You can add, you can, when you're teaching soft, strong feelings, this is a very soft thing that you can use for soft 
feelings and also you can use it for color sorting so you can just use this one what is this you can pick one color in a day or depending on your child's restaurants so these are very nice colors so you can check them out if you are not here around this part of the world i'm sure this thing is going to be in amazon just check for tiny trades they're going to be there in amazon so see they are very soft very nice so you can just go ahead and check that and i go back to the stick for one-on-one -on -one activity from two years you can use this but you have to ensure you are not distracted because this is not safe they can poke themselves they can hurt themselves they are not supposed to put in the mouth you know how dangerous that can be so it must be 101 percent attention from the caregiver to that particular child so when you want to use this one as a color sorting the best way to go about it is to have cups disposable cups after before you can start the color sorting by the way you have to ensure that you have gone through all the colors you've taken your time over the months to learn one color at a time you have you've learned about yellow you've learned about pink color you've learned about blue you've learned about red green you know you've done all these colors not after the order i took you guys thank you my family are here they're giving me the full support thank you baby uh they're giving me the full support my children is my children are here my husband is here they're enjoying they, they love watching me by the way and they're my number one friend i love you guys thank you for supporting all right so so ensure that you have done your color identification don't start sorting without being sure that your child is ready and it's at least have idea of colors if you start color color sorting without doing color identification the child doesn't it's not going to grasp anything it can be frustrating because the child that means the child is not even getting the instruction that means the child is not getting what you, you are expected so ensure the child can typically understand at least two three colors four colors is already known by the child then you get a table you put down these cups i think i'm still gonna call my team to move these cups for me so pmp you can come on come over be careful come help me to hold these cups come 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 thank you for waiting for mommy i know you're tired so i'm just because i don't have to because i'm my camera is high i can't show you the table right now come on samuel I know you're tired. Come on, brother. So imagine we have so many colors like this. Just stay right here. You know? Stay right there. Just need your hands. Just stretch your hands. Yeah, you don't have to be in the camera. Thank you. All right. So if we have a lot of colors like this, I think we have. We need more hand. Come on, honey. All right. Thank you, baby. So as we this is, uh, see, we have three cups. So you just have to sort. You have to show the child the first time your child is not going to. The child will not get the instruction of sorting red don't forget you have done your work on color identification now it's sorting red a child an infant will still come here and say red red because it's sure of red and it's excited so now you want to impart the knowledge of following instruction you want to impart the knowledge of sorting together in grouping so you're doing a lot of things together teaching following instruction and teaching how to group and teaching everything together all right i'm getting started all right just say red red you put yellow you say yellow yellow you can see the red thank you thank you babe yellow yellow pink and don't forget there is no dull moment with children sometimes they think they've done something wrong if they're not getting excitement from you if they're not getting that reaction from you they get sad have they done something wrong they have to always check yourself. Am I getting dull now? Green, green, like you're frustrated. You can't pass your aggression on children. They don't get anything. This is blue color. Blue, look at that. What color is this? You have to always put on your smiley face. They ensure that you sort it out. Blue. They, you know, don't forget you can do color sorting and counting. How many blue do we have in the cup? How many blue? Let's count together you have to ensure you pick your words and still continue to use your gesture in case you're not sure your child is getting the instruction 
Then we count one, two, two blue sticks. Two blue sticks. Don't forget, we are doing now teaching your child how to follow instructions, identification, color sorting, and that means we are doing literacy and mathematics together. So this is a very great activity. I, I'm not sure. I, I think this stick is from Maranak, as I said, those of you from Katara. You can check this out from Maranak. And it doesn't have to be stick. Also, uh, Precious, can you get me your felt pen? It doesn't have to be stick. You can get sketch pens. You go fast, darling. So it doesn't have to be stick. You can get sketch pen. Just as I said, you don't have to use stick. So this, see, when you want to do sorting, ensure the sticks are mixed together. Then you start sorting pink. Then you get another cup and do that. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. So it doesn't have to be stick. If you can't get the stick, another thing you can use for color sorting. See, when we as parents, we have to know how to be creative, just as I said before. When we buy something, you think it's when I show you what is this used for, you tell me it's a, it's a marker, it's just for coloring. Your child can scribble, but it doesn't have to be for coloring only. So if you don't have stick, you can use this one. And these things are very affordable. Like this one now from Maranak, it's only 1.5 reals. And this one is around like 4 reals or 3.5 reals thereabouts. I can't really remember. So when I give people this stationary gift, I don't like to leave the stick. And not because it's, I don't want them to know the money. I've come to realize that people devalue things because of the price. So I take out the price just for you to value it. Because you say it's just three years, I'll buy another one. And they will not use it appropriately. I love stationery and I have so much respect for stationery. Maybe because I'm an LES teacher. So, you can also use this when you buy. You know that your child can start scribbling as early as uh, five months. Mm, maybe not. Okay, let's say like ten months. Depending on how you can approach it. Depending on how you can approach it, pencil control can be taught anyway, anyhow. I've seen a baby of one year having very good pencil control. A baby less than one year having a very good pencil control. So it all depends on your approach to these things. So back to my point, you can use these things as color sorting, even in the cup. You just have to get enough of this song. So it means that you can teach your child about how many colors, let's say like five colors. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, eight colors or nine. So depending, because some of them are light and dark, you can't start to teach a baby this is light green, dark. It depends. If your child is responding, why not? Don't wait. Keep pushing. But if your child is not finding it easy, don't forget, take a pause, ensure the response is there before you forge your head. So you bought this for scribbling, you bought this for coloring. Don't forget, it can also be useful. Thank you, Pekile. You can go sit down and thank you very much. So you bought these things for, for coloring, but don't forget, they can also be used as counters. They can use uh, sorting, sorting, yes. That was the next one I was going to say. They can be used for color sorting and also be used for counters. When you use them and it's finished, you know what I do with those things? Because there is a lot of counters. You know, I don't know which aspect, the region you are watching me from, but in this part of the world, we are building counters that you, thank you very much, that children are going to be ready to learn to count. However, you can also create something, you can reuse. You can reuse some of those things. Once this thing is finishing, just be removing the lid. Take out the lids. I have a whole lot of lids. Sometimes I try because the box is full. See? Take out these lids, the cover. Once the marker is finished, before you trash the marker, keep this lid. So you can keep you can use this one as counter. You can use it as colored sorting. So and you can use it as like a block. Like this one, you can like an interstar. See? You can make, see, the child can use that. That is also a fine motor skills. So you can teach your fine motor skills. You can teach your color sorting. You can teach your child counting with this, what you can call the waste tech material. So there is a whole lot of things you can do with this cover, the lid. Never trash them again, never ever. See, when your child push this in, that is the fine motor skill development. When your child starts to count to one, you're using this wasted material to teach your child counting. 
when you have a lot and your child starts to sort by colors, you're using this wasted material to learn sorting. You know how much you've saved? So I'm teaching you not just how to about parenting, I'm also teaching you how to save, how to save. So there is a lot of materials that we trash that is useful for our children. So now you know, in case you don't know before, that these materials are very useful. The lead are very useful. All right, guys, can you somebody just help me close this up? All right. Thank you, PMP. Just close them up properly. All right, that's fine. All right, close them up properly. So we are done with the sorting out. From there, I am going to show you another. Okay, and see, I have one beautiful counter here. I really like this counter. It's a mini ladybug. See, I don't know if you can see properly from the screen. I got this long time ago. I'm sure it's also from around because I buy most of my things from around. But see, it's very cute. You can do this with your three years. Your three years should be able to know that this is not because it's kind of tiny. You can't do it under two because this is very. It's not safe for your child to swallow. So be careful. But also one on one. But your three years also can use this identification or craft or counters. So there's a whole lot, a whole lot, and you can get so many more beautiful counters. See how beautiful the ladybugs are. So I have that, those ones here. Just stop them properly, please. Another thing you can do with your, it's your, even one and a half year old baby cups, stocking, stop the cups. Let your child just remove, even one year can do this. Just, they are counting, ensure they are removing, they are stocking it back. Let them stock. Let them stock the cup. Let them stock the cup. Another thing is then from there, once they're comfortable in removing the cups and just stocking, just sticking them up, just sticking them up. So you can begin to arrange and build. I don't have a proper table. I begin to put a, a, a see. Begin to teach them how to just arrange. I don't have table and I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. You just arrange stocking and just raising it all gradually not until they all for a start let them just arrange keep a line off and count one two especially you know when you are teaching your child a three years old child how to stay in line do you know you can use this cup as an activity they're just learning how to keep lines straight how to keep their hands behind their back if the teacher is using that or hands and shoulders when the word was still okay because now you know sharing is caring is no more sharing is caring in his class so sharing is not here and I just hope the things things get better and not get worse and so you can teach them how to keep the use this one to be a straight line so straight line curve you just tell your child on a straight line I wish I have a high table right now so then so the child can just keep arranging the cups you just keep arranging the cup that's a straight line then you start to experience see the cups are lining up the cops are listening. They are on a straight line. We have to keep our line straight. Then from there, there's all, so many, a whole lot of activity you can do. When your child of three years is struggling with pencil control, pencil control, pencil control, pencil control, then you can introduce the spec. Never wait. Start. If your child of two years can hold pencil, don't wait. It's two years, she's still two years. Never wait. Never wait. Give them peg, let them press. Give them peg, let them. I know it's tiring to just give your child peg to press, press, press. It's tiring. You're like, okay, what are we going to do now? So now, remember these cups? You put it in front of them and let them start. Let them start. One, do your counters again. Two, you can start your color sorting. Also, get colorful pegs. Say, so I have a whole lot of them. This, you know, because if you are teaching colors or you are teaching counting, you cannot use the same resources over and again. Children get bored. You have to create. You have to make it new. You have to make it new. Same routine, but different approach. It must be different. They get. They get. Uh, they get connected. They, they are always ready when they see new things because they are excited. They're trying to see what are we going to do today. They like to see new things, even though it's a, they don't like to mix up their routine. But the activity, you know, just spice it up. They like to be spiced up. See, let them see this one now. You're doing your pencil control. Very nice, fine motor activity. The muscles is going to get strengthened. Can you see that? 
the muscles get strengthened. Also, you can tell them the green color team, the orange team, the pink team, the blue team. So it's a whole lot of things. Never be tired. Don't get tired. You can do a whole lot of things. But this is a very good activity. A very good. I can recommend this activity to you anytime, any day. If your child is struggling, and especially if your child is struggling, they cannot really know, they can't really figure out what's the problem. So sometimes the nerves are not developing properly. Sometimes the nerves need exercise. Exercise. So this is a very nice one. You can get a, a jelly ball also. Let them just massage. Let them play with it. If your child is comfortable playing with a jelly ball or any squishy fruits, toy, let them just keep pushing that. But jelly is better because that one can be too soft. So they need something they can they need to press exact energy so this one is very good see they have to press a little bit they need to put force that is when the muscles can be strengthened and it's going to help their pencil control so this peg activity is one of my favorite activity for teaching pencil control i cannot overemphasize this try it out if your child is struggling let your child and it's a lot of people they get the children very tired. They didn't take their time to do this activity. They just get the pull that they just straight to pencil and paper, just start drawing. You can write A. It doesn't work like that. I was taught like that back in Africa, but now I know better. Been an early days teacher in this part of the world for the last 10, over 10 years now. Yes, they're about. Yes, about 10, well over 10 years. So I know better now that you don't just push in notebook to your child. You have to build that interest. By the time the nerves are strong, from this one you go to very chunky pencils and crayons, you go to scribblings, let them just scribble. Sometimes you need to get the big black board in your compound or the white board. Let them just hold the chunk, the chunky cows. I don't have a, uh, a chunky chalk right now, but it's very good. Give them the chunky one, not something very tiny. Imagine giving somebody a child of three years who is struggling with pencil control, a tiny pencil like this. It's frustrating and that's affecting the brain. So ensure whatever you're giving them at the beginning is a little bit chunky so that they can feel what they're holding and try to write. But never throw books and paper to your child straight away. Just do these activities first. Build their interest into writing and by the time they are ready, that the time they do scribbling, do coloring, dotted lines, you know, pre writings, then you can go ahead at least do pre writing before you jump into writing. It's very important. Never just jump all this process of sensory, fine motor skills, peg arrangement, and uh, even play doh everything and um, dotted lines pre writing into writing. It doesn't help, it affects the brain of the child and they get frustrated. All right, I'm just gonna have to just drink water. Okay, next I am going to show you some numbers that I have. If you want to start teaching your children numbers identification, this one has stickers. They are very affordable. They are very affordable. I'm sure something like this will be in uh, Amazon. And they are, they, if you have a room, if you have a room, and if you don't have a room, you can create a corner. If you don't want your wall to be damaged, you can put, you can get the board. Or just put something to protect the wall then you can stick it and even if you don't want to stick it then because they are sticky they are sticky excuse me these are sticky forms if you want to if you don't want to stick them thank you if you don't want to stick them you can just use them as flashcards and by the time you have done the identification don't forget just like we said in colors also numbers is going to take time at the beginning if you are teaching your five month old baby numbers or six month old babies or seven eight more you know within their month less than eight you don't teach them too much of numbers in a day except the child is you know some child are gifted so you see that you've taught one and they already grabs it then push it but if not just relax so make sure you teach you one number in one week one week yes one week number one and you're going to now introduce that number one in you use play-doh to do it you use sand you let them trace with their hand you have a sand tray. This is also feelings. You use their hand to trace it. The sand. Then you ensure you wash the hands. Just use your hand. This that is gonna do feelings. And once they trace it, it stick into their brain. 
and it helped them to identify that no i felt that i think that was what i did it gets stuck into their brain number one but if your child is grasping very first then you go to number two so if you don't want to stick it on the wall it's very okay you can use them as flash and they're very nice they are soft your child can play with them they can't arm they can't scratch you can see they are very safe they are safe for three month old baby they are safe they are safe as safe you understand what i mean they are very very safe so this is a very good one it's okay it's okay that's fine it's okay mama. so they are very safe so you can use them you can use it for your children so what else am I going to show you tonight? So when you want to start teaching, I spoke about messy painting the other time, but I didn't remember to tell you about uh, watercolor, water paint. Water paint is good after, not as early, not early enough. Messy painting is first, but when your child has become two, then you can start to use watercolor to color in, to paint in. Okay, how do I put that? Messy painting doesn't have a picture they want to paint. They just want to make mess and just ensure they just enjoy the sensory aspect of it, the feelings they want to enjoy. But when you start introducing your child to paint a picture, it might not be so easy to introduce paint at the beginning because it's new for them to learn how to paint within the line. So you start with a watercolor. Just start with the watercolor because it's less of work for you. So start with the watercolor. Teach them that they should just use it within the line. Once they're comfortable, then you can go ahead with paint. With proper paint. All right, that's it, like that. Also, if you want to teach your child objects, I forgot something very important. You know, when you, we have this one, stuck in the blocks, Legos. Legos, you can start Lego as early as six months as long as your child can sit up on a own, you can start lego you just need to be there with your child and just show how to stick how to how to fix the blocks the legos and this one also can be used as color sorting they can be used for colors identification so this one you can start as early as six months as long as your child can sit six seven months eight months one year it's okay just show your child even if it's one if it's one star that a child can be, it's okay. That's an achievement. It's a milestone. So even if your child can stick one, two blocks together, it's a huge milestone. It's a very great achievement. It's a huge milestone. So color sorting is talking together. This is never too late for your child who can sit on his or her own of six months as long as you're going to be there and show the child. Before you know it, by the age of 10 months, one year your child can be a high for tower yes i feel tower so another thing that is very important to do and i did this when my child my children were very young a few months and in fact when they were young you know what i did i turned my living room to permanently stuffed play area it was a permanent sub play area i don't have guests and if you want to come to my house i tell you i i owe anybody no apology like please remove your shoes because everywhere now I don't, we don't really like, I don't really care anymore. I don't even want anybody to take off shoes now. I don't even have soft area anymore. I don't have carpet around the house anymore. I took everything out. However, at that moment, my concentration was on them. I never care about what people will say, but that's your job. My focus and attention was on them, what I wanted to achieve. And by the grace of God, I was able to achieve it. And that is it. I give myself a star. I make my, pat myself at the back and tell myself, oh yeah, well done. And I want you also to do the same and do much more than I did so that you can pat yourself at the back and tell yourself, mm -mm, well done. So back to my story. I had this soft play as very hairy carpet and very bright, uh, very, very bright. And then I had the, the mobile pool, the children pool. Permanently, I had a whole lot of color. So I made a color pool permanently in my living room. Mm-hmm. It was permanent because I was there for a few months because they needed to sit and eat. We needed to do color sorting. They needed to throw it around and crawl and catch it up. And then, even when they were not even communicating yet, we all tell them just give me yellow, yellow. I remember it was peculiar. One of them always shouting yellow, yellow, yellow. You know, we go for that yellow, and we, we that color was just coming out even before it was we, we like yellow, yellow, and everything. I think it was precious. I can't really remember who was. Always saying yellow and uh, 
He likes, uh, they're just telling me it's precious because precious like all of But you guys were not uh, mature enough to remember that. Anyways, so I had this balls. I, I, in fact, it was a lot of balls. I still have a whole lot of balls in my house. You are in Doha, you want balls, you can come. <laughs> all right so then we were sorting and sorting they love the feelings we just put ourselves inside they bounce back we trash around you know they love to see the colors we just throw things around they so excited five months they're like oh they're trying to talk then you teach them the communication you know you do games and they crawl into the, and when they were trying to learn how to crawl they try to go ahead and get the balls you know when you throw this thing off they get excited they get excited they get excited so please don't be tired i know so that I, oh, yeah, you don't understand oh yeah i don't have any help you want to hear the truth when they were from age uh, less than four months to around one year plus one and a half years less than two i was alone with them without any help in my house so if i could do that you can also do it so I was the mummy, the wife, the cook, the, the major, the major, major, and the only caregiver, apart from when their dad is back from work, and he was always there to help. So what I did at that time, when they were much younger, is I have this double stroller. For those of you that have twins, and you, uh, how can I raise my team? Maybe I'll just make a video about that. How can I raise my twins without help? I think I need to make a separate video on that, on how I was able to raise my twins without help. What I had then was a dog stroller around the house. The house was spacious enough. What I do is just push them around the house. I'll now communicate with them. I'll let them know what is happening. They were so used to the routine. They never gave problem because I started talking to them like a grown up from a very tender age. I let them understand what is going on. You know, PMP, it's time to cook. Mommy is going to be cooking right now. We go to the kitchen. And they just keep watching me like this. They never disturb because I think when you talk to children, you think they're little. So, so I just tell them, Mommy is going to cook now. They're like, they're like, okay. And actually, they don't like, that's just my own sentiment. Like, they didn't say okay because they couldn't talk. I was talking about when they were four months. So they just be quiet, apparently. You know, and for me, I always say, and I'm not apologetic about it, I believe in God. And I believe in the Bible that says you can do all things through Christ. If you're a believer of God, you're a Christian, you're born again, you're spirit-filled. I hold God on the platform of his word. So, then I, I believed God, I told God to help me, and he helped. So, we're just enjoying ourselves, guys. You can just have fun by picking up the... Okay, we can pick later because of this. Alright, so we add fun and fun a lot of fun time with that when they were growing up see this is fun i love it myself i play like a baby you know i just want to throw and we try to pretend as if we're juggling even though i can't juggle so i just pretend as if i like we juggle and we enjoy and everything so that was that also i i'm not sure i can finish all the videos all the things i prepared to show you today but i'll see how that goes if you want to start reading for your children, don't be boring and don't read to your child when you start. Make sure that you express what is on the book. Now I'm about to start another series about reading for children. I want to start with my storytelling time. I've been trying to do some recording, but I've been kind of busy and I've not been able to finish up with that. So I like reading to children. So I'm going to start the storytelling time, which which is oh yeah so when you're telling your story to your child make sure we know they don't even understand much that you're saying but your expression the way you exclaim the way you smile the way you say and the ball was rolling and rolling and it went flat so they want to hear the sound they want to see the gesture and that is what gives them assurance and affirmation that this fun thing is what they should enjoy so you can get a whole lot of nice storybooks and bedtime story for your children and also this is a very lovely book that i had for years yes yes in fact i lost a whole lot of this book wherever i've worked in the past i take them to work and the children will keep ripping them i remember about seven years ago i took about i can't remember like 20 of different ones but that particular children said they damaged my book and i can't really get this ones again i can't get them again from around it it's a very nice book. You know why I like this book? It's a picture book. Not just a book, but it gives you the picture of what you're going to learn. This is to see. You want to read, up, read about. Uh, this is a book, and it shows the child elephant. Can you see? This is a little elephant. And it's a little elephant. 
And by the time before the child is going to read about it or you're going to tell the child about the story of an elephant, they can already see from the picture that is a little elephant. See, this is a, a little duckling. It's a book. So you see, it's a very interesting book. I had a whole lot of them before. I can't really place my hand on them anymore. So this is a very nice book. Even if you cannot get this book, make sure you have a very nice printing big book. A very nice, it's really when you start showing objects. If you don't want to use flash card, you can get it. I have these big books on vegetables, cars, and things like that. I think they are all ripped or I left them wherever I've worked before. Sometimes I just leave it to the organization. So see, this is a little, a little, uh, a little chimp. I don't know if you can see it. Little chimp. So these books are very good. If you can lay your hands upon them, please go ahead. Let your chimp, you know, even if you're not, if you, even if you're not reading them. Looking at the picture alone goes a long way. So they are very lovely book. I don't joke with them. I love my books. I love my stationaries. And I, I have this. See, it just got broken recently, the tail. This dinosaur. And it's working. If I put batteries working, it can work. It can work and be seeing it. I had this dinosaur, I think, for the last uh this was uh from halfway. It was a long time ago. I think from like I had this uh Maybe like eight years ago, so it'll be singing. And one time we are doing dinosaur theme, uh, anytime we are doing dinosaur theme, I take it to my class, I just play it, and it's moving around and dancing. So ensure that you have something that is close to what you're teaching your child. I know there's no more dinosaur, there's nothing like dinosaur on the planet Earth, but if you can get something like this, and in other animals that you're teaching your child, it's very important. It's make it come alive to them. It came. It make it come to reality instead of always using the screen I, there's nothing bad in using the screen but if you, if you can avoid using the screen to show them the objects something they can feel and touch it is much much better it is much better if they can see it can feel it it stick more you know you then you reduce the risk of electronic screen syndrome so that's just by the way another thing is Koye, where can i start teaching my child jelly phonics at age one or age two it's not even about age one or age two. You can start teaching your child your leaf volume from days and months. You don't have to wait for age one or age two. It's just a sound. It's just a phone. Is. You can try. You can start as early as one week. By the time you start your second time, that's what this thing I, do, I did for my children from day one. I started the second time. I'll sing for them in the every morning. We sing nursery rhymes. We do, 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 do everything together. So also... So also, the jolly phone doesn't have to be till when they one or two because you can start with the songs, start introducing the songs to them, you know, then from there, you because they're looking at you when you sing to them, so you show them the signs, the signs are very nice gesture. From there, you'll be telling them the stories from the, so by the time they will really learn about identification and writing, they are so comfortable with the songs, with a story and with the science. You know, Jolly Phonics is a very good phonics, at least that I've used in the past. And I can, it, it's been tested and trusted for me. I know a lot of people are not using Jolly Phonics anymore. I've done letter learn before, but I find Jolly Phonics very interesting because even floppy phonics, it's still a continuation of Jolly Phonics. So even by the time you get used to the character in the Oxford region tree, everything starts from Jolly Phonics. So don't wait. Sing the song, you know, the snake is in the grass, the snake is in the grass, the snake is in the grass, ah, ah, and to my arms, ah, ah, and to my arms, ha, ah, and to my arms, they call, see me all arm. You know, you let them see what you're doing, you let them enjoy, you show them that you also, you're enjoying the song, so they get to focus and show their interest. So, it is never too late or too early. These are flashcards. I think I'm not going to go into this flashcard today because of time. But these are some uh, jelly phone flashcards that, uh, card that I have with me. If you can get their flashcards later, it's not very important. This fact that for early years is not very important. If you're teaching your under one year old jelly phonics, you don't need flashcards. The truth is, you don't need flashcards. You just need to play the songs and sing the songs and tell the stories. <coughs> Excuse me. You just need to play the songs, tell the stories, and show the signs. 
don't push it that's good enough for under a year so for if you're teaching age one plus to two years they start to use a flashcard for identification but if your child is grasping before that's what like i said don't wait it's not a standard if your child is just getting it even before one day if you want to use that's really up to you so you start to show them if you can get the jolly phone is big book which is not very important but if you can afford it why not get it read the story out for them but you can also get it online you can print them online read the story out for them then from the story you get the sound you get the sign and get the sound so you can never wait oh yes answer the question of when can i start jelly folding to my child as early as possible you know that the approach is not going to be like you're given the flashcard or you're given the uh the the writing or you're given the the blending part no it's not none of that it's just for you to teach your child the singing the story but well, start with the singing first but when you get the child is growing the child is growing it's not paying attention to the story like six months seven months you start to tell the stories then you start to show the signs you can get to see if your child is enjoying it by the laughter and the smiles they're going to give back to you and also i have like this counting these are not very important at the beginning if you don't want to use it because you can use so many other approach you can use so many of these for play-doh you can let your child roll the play-doh i mean this is number 12 count 12 tomatoes they can count the 12 tomatoes then they can roll the play-doh they grow play-doh so many other flashcards any of these flashcards you can tell them to build play-doh with inky inky the mouse you can pretend to use inky and play on inky and so many things you just have to create it there's no standard as long as your child is learning as long as your child is achieving something and you're checking all the milestone your child is achieving it kudos to you mommy you're doing a fantastic job i am very tired now and i'm very exhausted but i hope you have been able to get something today on this special super special edition of preventing essentials don't forget this is coming to you from the vision guide and if you're new here i say welcome 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 and if you're an old subscriber thank you for always coming back thank you for your support on this channel please don't stop watching our videos we really need you to watch our videos we really need you to please share our videos we need you to like and drop your comment for the new subscribers thank you for subscribing and if you're just watching me and you have not subscribed please consider subscribing we really appreciate that and please turn on the notification bell so that you can get notified when we drop new videos you can go onto our playlist and see so many things that we have on this channel it's not about parenting essential you know the family keeping it real is there the pmp phone city is there our family life and so many fun videos are coming on the way so for you not to miss out and for you to show us love please 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 subscribe and share share and like thank you once again if you're just joining on halfway or you didn't watch from the beginning my name is oye just like where i like to call myself oye lie up for four and have your parenting coach thank you bye for now and i'll see you on another wonderful special edition of parenting essential i said big thank you to my family that are supporting you right there thank you oye i love you so much darling Thank you, PMP, for staying awake till now to make sure I finish this video, even though you know I've been tired. I'm tired. I mean, it's been a long day. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for watching. Love you, love you, love you, love you. Bye for now. Just a quick one in case you're looking at my outfit, my top, and you really like it. This is from the Vision Guide Style, TVG Styles. So you can order yours if you're in Qatar. And it's environment so you can order yours in any color we have this in green color we have it in black color we have it in purple color yes we have it in purple color so you can we have so many other styles not just only the styles and the good thing is you can customize yours you can make it for your princess you can write the name of your husband you can write the name of your daughter you can use it as a gift to somebody and say happy birthday all you need to do is just to order yours and tell us what you want to write on your customized t on uh, it's not a t-shirt though this is original from the vision guide it's a very beautiful and quality velvet and our stones are very very quality it's the highest
quality stones that we're using. So just go ahead, order yours, and we are going to serve you better, and we are going to give you the best that you want. All right? It's from the vision guide. Can you see that? In this top, I put the vision. Can you see that? The vision. I put the vision. So you can choose what you want to write on yours. Don't forget that only the vision guide. So this is the vision from TVG Styles. Order yours, Sora. Bye, guys. Can you come and say bye to everybody? Bye. 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 So thank you for waiting to the end. Thank you. All right, come on, for Don't forget to subscribe. Say bye to everyone. Bye. 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 We, we love you. We love you. Bye.